going over what we did last class, um, the idea of last class is that you're able to, you know, if I give you a word equation, you can write out the chemical, uh, the formulas for the reactants and products, include the states of matter, then balance them, then classify them with one of these five kinds of reactions over here. So they tell us sodium metal reacts with water to give sodium hydroxide solution and hydrogen gas. So sodium metal, sodium is Na. And if it's a metal, metals are solid. So you put parentheses S. And they, it reacts with, so plus water. Now water, you got to memorize that. That's H2O. And you assume water is a liquid. Um, I'm not right over here. Water is a liquid. Water equals, unless they say like it's a vapor. So you got to put liquid. And then we're producing sodium hydroxide solution. Sodium is Na. Hydroxide is one of your polyatomic ions. It's OH. Um, now check your charges. This is ionic. Sodium is a plus one charge. Hydroxide is a minus one. So those charges cancel out. So we would be balanced. Out. Solution, that is AQ for aqu aqueous. That means it was uh, dissolved in water. And then hydrogen gas. Hydrogen is diatomic. So that is H2. Okay. Now, um, I'm wanting you to then balance it. So let's uh, take account of all of our atoms. We have one sodium, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. And then our products, we have one sodium, three hydrogens, and one oxygen. So we got to fix our hydrogens. Now, um, there is not anything that we can multiply this H2O by to get to four, uh, to get it to three. Let's do the next best thing, which would be, let's just try to get it to four and see what that does for us. So if I double the H2O, that would give me, uh, not two again, that would give me four hydrogens, but then that two also multiplies by that O there. So now we're gonna have two oxygen. Okay. And coming over here, well, if I were to double my NaOH, yeah, that's going to mess up our Na, which isn't the best, but that two will multiply by the O, giving us two oxygens, and this two multiplies by the hydrogen. Now, this is tricky. What a lot of people uh, I see students do is they think when you put a two there, you then will multiply this down here. The hydrogen down there, that three by two. What's the mistake with that? What's the issue with that? Plus, it's understandable why they think you're going to do that, but it's it's a really critical mistake. Sure. Um, because they're they're adding way too many hydrogens rather than just taking away the one and then replacing it. Yeah, the only re the only way you could do that is if this two also multiplied by the H two. That two only applies to this hydrogen. So what, what, what happens here is we have, um, bless you, you have two hydrogens here and two hydrogens there. So we wouldn't have three times two. We would just have four hydrogens, which is good. That's what we would like. That, that gets our hydrogens balanced. And then coming over here to finish it up, if I just double my sodium, that would then give us two NAs. Okay. So in the formative, you put two Na and then the state of matter. And then the final thing is the classify. So which reaction would this be? Yeah. Single replacement. Single replacement. Fantastic. If you're still having a little issue figuring out which one of these would be, I think the first thing to check is count the number of reactants and products. So Na, that would be one reactant. H2O, that would be a second reactant. So we have two reactants. And then NaOH, that's one product. H2, that's two products. So you have the same number of reactants and products. So that means it's not a synthesis or decomposition. It's not a combustion reaction because you're not combining with oxygen, nor are you making H2O and CO2. So it's either single replacement or double replacement. You know it's single replacement because single replacement, you have element plus compound, and you make a compound plus an element. So sodium is my element. Water is my compound. We make a compound, NaOH. And another element. Now, even though this is this this might look like a compound, 
because you see like a two there. Remember, um, uh, hydrogen exists diatomically, so that's still an element. A compound has to be two different elements, not the same. Okay, so there you go. Um, so getting your notes out, we're, we're doing, it's called predicting products. And uh, I, I think with this is kind of cool because um, this is really getting into, uh, so predicting products. This is sort of, I don't know, I feel like it might make you feel like a real, like a real chemist now. Because you're actually doing reactions. Like you're actually seeing, well, how do you, like how do you know if I want to make these products, which reactants do I bring together? Like if I want to, like if you're a cook, like if I want to make something, what ingredients do I need? We're, we're kind of, I'm sort of teaching you um, something kind of like that. So I, I don't know. I, I think it makes it maybe maybe a little bit more re real and, um, and kind of practical. So predicting the products, we're going to use those five reactions we learned about last class. And um, when you're doing these, you kind of have to use a little bit of common sense. Like when you look at these, like here, this first reaction... I have Na plus Cl2, sodium plus chlorine. You got to ask yourself, what could I possibly do with that? Like if I handed you um, a hot dog bun and a hot dog, what would what could you do with a hot dog bun and a hot dog? You could you could make a hot dog. You put the hot dog in the bun, and now you have a hot dog. And so if I give you sodium and chlorine, what could you possibly do with those? You just, you combine them. The only, like, think about it. The only thing that could possibly happen here is the Na combined to the Cl making NaCl. Like, I can't imagine anything else you could possibly make with that. The only thing I could maybe see somebody do, like, you, you know, perhaps I could see this. You writing ClNa. Now, what would be the issue with that? That's a more honest mistake, but what's the issue with that? Hey, what's that? Yeah, like you always put sodium's got the, the is the cation, it gives you a plus one charge. Chlorine's the anion, it gives you a minus one charge. Convention says you always write the, the cation, the positive one first. Now, another thing that you have to be able to do with these, you have to know how to how to name things. Right? So you notice how it's NaCl, not NaCl2. It's not NaCl2 because you don't need two minus ones. You just need one minus one to cancel out the plus one of sodium. Now, I'm gonna give you a little break from writing the states of matter on this, so you don't need to worry about states of matter. I just want you to, to write the products, okay? So that would be the answer for that. Um, I could then, and I, and I do have you uh, balance them um, in the uh, in the formula. Why don't we go and balance them? Just so we get in the habit of it. So here I got Na, one Na, two Cl's. 1Na, 1Cl. So to balance it, I would need to double the NaCl. That would give me two of each of these. So then if I double my sodium, now we'd be balanced. Okay. Now what is a little bit trickier uh, eventually is like I'm, I'm telling you these are synthesis reactions. On the formative and on your test, I'm not going to tell you it's a synthesis, but... Um, you know, again, if you see two elements, so another way of thinking about this, if you see two elements by themselves, you know it has to be a synthesis. You know those two elements have to make the compound because, again, there's no other option that they would make. All right, let's do the second one. You have aluminum um, plus sulfur. Well, similar to this, you don't really have any other option other than those two elements will make a compound. So you would have aluminum sulfide. Now, what is trickier here is making sure you write the chemical formula correctly. To do that, you got you to remember how to find the charges on things. So, so aluminum is in group 3, or, or 13. Everything there has got a plus 3 charge. Sulfur is in group 6 or 16. It's got a minus 2. So with that in mind, what would the formula be? How would I get those charges to cancel out to 0? Okay. Yeah, Al2S3. So the, the, the trick is to cross uh, the charges, meaning if you have a plus three for aluminum, that's how many sulfurs you have. And if you have a minus two on sulfur, that's how many aluminums you have. So Al2S3. Okay. And then um, let's balance. 
So I have one aluminum, one sulfur, two aluminums, three sulfurs. So maybe we, uh, well this one's actually fairly easy because you can just do that. You can double the aluminum and then triple the sulfur and then you'd be balanced. Okay. So as I said, I, I, I think it's, it's not necessarily much of like a, a leap. I think it's a little bit more of just a step. If you understand these basic reactions, I don't think it's too bad predicting the products. Um, all right. Now then, let's talk about decomposition reactions. So if I just give you the reactants of a decomposition reaction, how would you know the products? Well, and I don't know if people back there, if the camera's kind of cutting it off, I'll write a little bigger up here. If you have the format, if you start with the compound, and that is the only thing you have, and I ask you, what's, what will happen with this? For this, use a little common sense. Like, what could possibly happen if you have a compound? The only thing that could possibly happen is that compound just breaks apart into the elements that make it up. And there's nothing really else that could go on with that. So, I'm going to split that apart and I'm going to have mercury. Now, what you have to be careful with is you got to remember your diatomic elements. So, diatomic ones are H2, N2, O2, and then all of group 17. So, oxygen is diatomic, so it is O2. And that's important because when you when you now balance it, you're not going to be able to balance it correctly if you didn't if you didn't write it um, correctly in the first place. So, we balance that. I'm going to have to double this. And then if I come over here and double the mercury, that will then get us balanced. Okay. Now here, NaCl, again, what could possibly happen? Like the only thing that could happen is this thing just breaks apart into the elements that make it up. So it would break apart into Na and Cl. But remember your diatomic elements, chlorine would be diatomic, so it's Cl2. And then you need a balance, so you have 1Na, 1Cl, and our products, 1Na, 2Cls, so you'd have to double this. And then if you were to double the sodium, that would then get everything balanced. Okay, any questions so far? All right, cool. Moving on to uh, combustion reactions. Now, combustion reactions, this one is, is a little less obvious, perhaps, as like uh, the synthesis and decomposition. This is one where you do actually have to memorize the products. So a combustion reaction, you will get some sort of fuel source. Now, so this is your fuel. Now, typically that fuel is a hydrocarbon, some sort of combination of carbons and hydrogens. Thank you. Uh, um, it technically could be like magnesium, like when we, when we burn the magnesium in the lab. Um, but either way, the only product is what you have to memorize for this. It's the products are always CO2 and H2O, carbon dioxide and water. And I, I think it can be relatively easy to, to remember because, um, you know, like, what do we worry about? Like, this is what, you know, hydrocarbons is what we put in our cars when we're like running our cars. What is the thing that everybody worries about with like using fossil fuels and, you know, um, you know, burning fossil fuels and stuff? What's the thing that like, you know, kind of leading to global warming and stuff? Trevor? Uh, carbon emissions. Carbon dioxide, carbon emissions, so CO2. And then water, you know, I don't know, maybe that one isn't quite as obvious, but I don't know, we all need water. So CO2 and H2O. Now, um, you'll then have to balance this. So, um... I'll write a little bit bigger up here. I know it's kind of cut off there. It's C4H8 plus O2 gives you CO2 and H2O. So whenever you're, you're doing these, you have to, remember Cho, go in order, balance the carbons first, then the hydrogens, then the oxygens. So in our products, you got one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. So go for the carbons first. So I'd put a four on the CO2. That would give me four carbons. And how many oxygens? It's a little tricky. Three, two, three, four. Yeah. 
You'd have four times two is eight, plus one is nine. You'd have nine oxygens. Coming over here, fix your hydrogens next. So I'm gonna wanna put a four next to the H2O. That'll give me eight hydrogens, but that's gonna change my oxygen number. Now I'm gonna have four times two is eight oxygens plus another four oxygens, that's 12 oxygens. So come back over here and then I'm almost done. If I just put a six in front of my O2, that would then get me my 12 oxygens. Okay, so there you go. That's how you'd write the products and then balance for a combustion reaction. Okay, talking about double uh, replacement or double displacement you'll sometimes see. Uh, they're both synonyms. So these ones, you know it is double replacement or double displacement when you see a compound plus another compound and you get out a compound plus another compound. What? what? Uh, before I do this, I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to duplicate this slide so we don't have the same issue. Uh... That's too much work. Okay, so double displacement, two compounds. Now, whenever you're doing these compounds, remember the, if we color code it, the sodium, that is your cation. The plane that gives you a positive charge. Sulfur is your anion, that comes second. Hydrogen's the cation, chlorine's the anion. In double displacement, or double replacement, the two anions are swapping spots, or swapping dance partners. So the two products you would make would be not Na2S, uh, it would be now Na, and it paired up with Cl, so NaCl. And now you gotta, you gotta balance charges here. Na is plus one, Cl is minus one. So those charges cancel out to zero, so it's just NaCl. The other product you made was now hydrogen is not paired up with chlorine, it's paired up with sulfur. So H and S, but you gotta, you gotta fix the charges. Hydrogen is a plus one charge, sulfur is a minus two charge. So I need two hydrogens, I need two plus ones to get that to cancel out. So it's H2S. Now let's balance. So I'd have two sodiums, one sulfur, one hydrogen, one chlorine. In our products, we have one sodium, one sulfur, two hydrogens, and one chlorine. So let's fix our hydrogens. That would mean I would have to double the HCl. So now I have two of each. Come over here, I'm gonna have to fix my, uh, my, my, uh, my chlorines here and my sodium. So if I double both of the, the NaCl, that would fix both of those. Okay. I'm just gonna do this real quick. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to see. Bear with me. ACL2 coming from. Seeing how the sausage is made, everybody. <laughs> okay, now we should be good. All right, so let's do the second one. Second double replacement. Now, again, anytime you see compound plus compound, you know it's double replacement or double displacement. So 
always for these, cation comes first, calcium's first, nitrate comes second. Calcium is a plus one charge, or I'm sorry, plus two charge. Nitrate is a minus one charge. That's why they had two of them. Sodium is a plus one charge. Chlorine's a minus one. That's why you just had uh, one of the minus ones. So when you're doing these, the anions are going to switch spots. Okay. So now calcium is going to be paired up with not nitrate, but now the other anion, the chlorine. So it'd be CaCl. But then check the charges. So here, calcium was a plus two. Chlorine's a minus one. The charges stay the same. Right? They're always going to have the same charges. But now, how many chlorines do I need? Got to have two, right? So CaCl2. And then plus, now sodium, my other cation. That's not paired up with Cl anymore. Now that's paired up with nitrate. Now, this is what I worry a lot of people are going to do. They're going to copy it. They're going to do this. And what's the issue with that? It's going quick. Mom? Sodium is supposed to have a two charge. Sodium is supposed to have a plus two charge. Or sodium, for this to make sense, sodium would have a plus two, right? But sodium has a plus one. So you need to have two sodium. It would be Na2. Oh, okay. So this is what it actually would be. It's just NaO3, NaNO3. All you do is you're just bringing over the nitrate. You don't bring over the two nitrates, right? On the, like on the last problem, we didn't bring over the two sodiums when we made the product. We just brought over sodium. So in other words, you only bring over the nitrate. You don't bring over the parentheses two. Yeah, just disregard it. Doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's. I mean. You don't necessarily disregard it, but you have to you have to make sure the charges cancel out. So you don't just automatically bring over two sodiums. We we take care of the two nitrates here by balancing the reaction. That's the purpose of balancing, right? Is to then you know we'll end up needing a two here to take account of that two there. But we take count of it by putting it in front as a as a coefficient, not by worrying about like the subscripts. All right. So now let's balance. So we got. One calcium. Now, whenever you're balancing, if you see nitrate here and nitrate there, that means you keep the nitrates together. So we got two nitrates, one sodium, one chlorine. And our products, we have one calcium, one nitrate, um, one sodium, and two chlorines. So then let's balance. I got a Got to fix my nitrates and my chlorines. So why don't we multiply this by two? Let's get our, that, that will change our sodium, which is unfortunate, but that will fix our nitrates. So let's come back over here. Now, if I just multiply the NaCl by two, now everything's all balanced. We're all good. Okay. So double displacement, double replacement. You're just swap, they're swap and dance partners. Okay, last kind is single replacement. So in single replacement, you know, well, first off, you know it's a single replacement reaction. If you see an element plus a compound, you see an element plus a compound just by itself, you know that has to be a single replacement reaction. And use a little common sense, like what could possibly happen here? Well, the only thing that could possibly happen is this potassium is going to replace whatever shares the same kind of charge as it. Meaning this potassium form, is it a cation or an anion? Is it from a positive charge or a negative charge? Potassium. What's the charge potassium? Plus one, right? So then potassium is going to want to swap with the other thing that has a positive charge, copper. And that'd be the single replacement reaction. So then now you have K going with SO4 and then copper is by itself. Now we got to make sure the charges cancel out here. Potassium is in the first group. So it has a plus one charge. Sulfate gives you a minus two. It's one of your polyatomic ions. So I need two 
potassium to cancel out the minus 2 of sulfate. So K2SO4. Get the 2 plus 1. And that'd be your products. Okay? All right. Um, let me do the same thing for this one. Sorry, bear with me. So if we do the second one, we have Cl2 uh, plus NaBr. Now, when you're doing these, like the single replacement, I think are the hardest, just because you have to ask another question. You have to ask what it, what is the, what is this thing going to swap with, right? Because the question is, would chlorine swap with Na or is it swapping with Br? And it's always going to swap with a thing that has the same kind of charge. So chlorine would be an anion. Chlorine gives you that minus one charge. So it's going to swap with the anion. Last one, we had a metal that swapped with the, the, the other metal. Here, chlorine's a nonmetal. It's going to swap with the other nonmetal. Okay? So then in your products, you would get NaCl now. Make sure the charges cancel. Sodium's plus one. Chlorine's minus one. So those charges cancel. Now, see, notice here, I didn't bring the two over, right? Because that wouldn't balance out with sodium. And then Br is by itself. And bromine is one of your, uh, your diatomic elements, so it's Br2. So don't forget about the diatomic elements. That's something that'll mess you up when you're doing these. All right, now let's balance. So I got Na, one Na, two Cls, one Br, one Na, 1Cl, 2Brs. So why don't we fix our chlorines? So I'm going to have to double this. Give me two of those. Now I'm going to have to, if I double my NaBr, it'll be good. I'm going to raise that too. Um, and that should be it, notes-wise. Um, go ahead and stop this.